Hi, I'm Ernie Conover, and today I'd like to share with you a somewhat advanced technique called a secondary grind on a bowl gouge. This is a traditional gouge of about 1970 vintage. It has a fairly square face and is ground all the way around to about 45 degrees. It will turn a shallow bowl very well. But as you get into a deeper form with straighter walls, this transition from the wall area to the bottom of the bowl becomes a very sharp radius. And this tool will no longer perform well because the heel of the bevel will drive the cutting edge off of its intended course. In the 1970s, Irish turners came up with what is often called today the Irish grind, sometimes called an Ellsworth grind. To do this, they ground the face of the tool back at about a 30 degree angle and then uh, ground the nose to about 70 degrees and the sides to between 30 and 40 degrees. This does a much better job of turning that corner in deeper vessels. However, it still has a very long working bevel. Therefore, turners have come up with a solution of a secondary grind in which they grind this corner away and shorten the rubbing or working bevel to about an eighth of an inch, sometimes to as little as a sixteenth. And this will make the gouge turn an inside corner much better. Very recently, my friend Johannes Michelson, who turns great looking hats, has come up with a jig that marries into the Wolverine system and really cuts three bevels. It cuts a primary bevel, which is essentially an Irish grind, and then a secondary bevel to sort of knock the heel of the bevel off, and finally a third bevel, which he calls a tertiary bevel, and that essentially radiuses this whole area. I've covered using the Vera Grind and Wolverine jigs to produce a Irish grind in another video. Once you've completed that grind, you can make a secondary grind easily by simply sliding your Wolverine jig forward and grinding away the heel like so until you have about a 1 8 to 3 16 working bevel as so. Johannes Michelson's vector system replaces the standard one-way Wolverine pocket jig with one of his own manufacture. I have a little line here which allows me to position it correctly. And it has a hole left and right of center and three holes up the center. And into these fit the strut of his holding fixture. And it is quite different from one way's Veragrind fixture, for it does not have an articulated leg, which in the one way system controls the relationship between the nose bevel and the side bevels. Johannes controls this by how far out of the fixture the tool extends. To position the tool, and get the correct extension out of the fixture. The vector system comes with a little device that has a movable stop block. We simply put the fixture in upside down, slide it forwards till it stops, slide the tool forwards till it touches this stop, push down with our finger, and that brings the tool square in the fixture. To make the primary or rubbing bevel grind with the vector system, you use the left and right holes. For the right side, the right hole, the left side, the left hole. And you start just a little bit beyond center and come around like this and you have to go all the way down like this. And so it's useful to take the handle off the tool if possible with this fixture. What that does is it actually makes this edge curved and it completely eliminates this corner right here. That has always been uh, something that you can catch on very easily. The secondary grind is accomplished by using 
the second hole forward and you simply grind all the way around like this until you get the rubbing bevel to be the width you desire. The tertiary grind, you use the hole that is the furthest forward and you take a little more of that corner out of there like that, effectively radiusing the end of this tool and allowing it to turn corners very sharply. This is Ernie Converse saying, give secondary bevels a try.